You know that TikTok sound that's like, wait. That sounds like better, 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 better Stop. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be ranking popular tropes from TV and film. This is one of those things where like, again, many people on YouTube have done their own ranking of tropes, but I wanted to do my own ranking and share my own thoughts. Last week I posted in my community tab asking what your most and least favorite tropes are, so I've included a handful of those. By the way, if you don't want to miss the questions and polls that I post, make sure you're subscribed so that it pops up on your feed. Anyway, yeah, let's do it. So first I have to go through the tiers as always. At the top is sorry, but I actually really like this. These are my favorite tropes, the ones that never miss. The second tier is I like it, but it's complicated, which is for the tropes that I like or I like the idea of, but I have thoughts that make me not want to put it in my favorites. The middle is meh, which either means that I feel so neutral about the trope or I just don't think it's good, but I don't hate it. Second to last is please I beg you to let this go, meaning it's overdone and it's not good. I've had enough. And on the bottom is would fight this trope if it were a person. This is for the tropes that belong in jail and should be outlawed. It's pretty hard to defend these tropes and I hate the way that they're done. So starting off with probably one of the most talked about romantic tropes is enemies to lovers. I feel like you either love this trope or you hate this trope, like I have not met a single person who feels like in between about it. I think for the longest time I would tell myself that I love this trope because it sounds juicy and entertaining, but I think I've come to realize that I like the idea of this trope because most examples of enemies to lovers that I can think of in my head I don't really like, like at all. That's not to say that there aren't examples that I do like, there are just very few. I think it's rarely done well and a lot of portrayals end up being borderline problematic if not problematic. It's very easy to mess up because in order to write two characters that are enemies and then end up falling in love, you have to give them a reason to hate each other that they can get past or get over. But a lot of times what writers choose as that catalyst is kind of fucked up, like racism for one. So with that, I love the idea of this trope, but I don't love the way it's usually done, so I'm putting it in I like it, but it's complicated. Next is another romantic trope that's talked about a lot and that's friends to lovers. This is going to be controversial, I know it is, but I love friends to lovers. Dare I say more than enemies to lovers. It's just a more realistic trope, it's what a lot of people want, but also I can think of more examples that I do like of this trope as opposed to enemies to lovers. I think a lot of people find it boring and done enough, but to be honest, you can kind of say that about a lot of romantic tropes. I think it's worth noting that there is a lack of representation of truly platonic relationships between men and women, and that is my one criticism, that a lot of creators could leave perfectly good platonic relationships chips alone but then they ruin it and kind of force something that doesn't need to happen and it's dumb that it isn't more normal to see platonic relationships between men and women like it's so valuable but usually i love friends to lovers so sorry but i actually really like this the next trope is one that i wanted to add in but also someone commented on it and that is the trope where the parents are just nowhere to be found like they're either absentee parents or they're dead just the trope where the parents are just not involved in the kids' lives at all it's not like it isn't realistic like kids have had parents who have passed away or parents parents who are neglectful or parents who just didn't care. And that aspect of a character usually is important because it explains why they are the way that they are or sometimes that is related to the storyline that they have. But I'm so tired of it because in so many shows and movies I watch, I'm like, where are the parents? Like it's in everything, so many shows and movies, so I'm just, I'm gonna have to put this one in the category where we need to let this go. The next trope is one that truly makes my head spin off. The trope where the POC character, POC standing for person of color, ends up with the white love interest, usually over the more compatible love interests who are people of color. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with a character that's a person of color being with a white character. That's not at all what this is. Please delete your paragraph. I mean that it is a recurring thing in media where POC characters choose the white love interests and these characters are written to choose the white love interests over the other love interests that are a, more compatible, and B, people of color. It never really made sense to me. I think it sucks that there isn't enough representation of couples where both people are not white, but also like couples where both are not white and also not the same race or ethnicity. So this is a bottom tier for sure. This next one, I hope y'all don't think is an unpopular opinion, the love triangle trope. So overdone. I'm so unbelievably tired of this trope. I beg you to give us something else, please. Like begging writers to stop writing love triangles. I especially I especially don't like when it's written in a way where it's the only obstacle for a couple or it's the one thing getting in the way of the endgame couple or it's the major plot of the entire story. I genuinely don't know if I can name five well-known mainstream shows that don't have a love triangle and that's 
all I have to say on that, so that's going in please I beg you to let this go. Now we have one of my favorite tropes, the found family trope. This is the trope where a group of people who aren't related find themselves bonded like family because of their deep, close personal relationships with each other. Given when it's not like an unhealthy trauma bond, of course, I love this trope. I think it's so sweet. I think you especially find this trope in stories about people in their 20s, like sitcoms, for example, because it's the time in your life where you're an adult and you're out on your own away from your family, but you're also still figuring things out so your close friends around you become like your family. But it's also and other things too and I love it every time. Okay, this next trope is one that I legitimately didn't even think about until I saw someone comment it. The resurrection slash fake death trope where characters die but then somehow they're brought back to life or they weren't actually dead. I feel like every time I see this trope, I'm like, oh, so they just didn't know what to write. And I also feel like this trope is used when writers or whoever is spearheading these creative decisions are too afraid to commit to killing a character. And I just think that most of the time, if you're going to do it, you gotta fully commit. That being said, I neither like it nor or feel really negative towards it, so I'm gonna put it in meh. The next trope is truly a crime. It's called Bury Your Gaze, where LGBT characters are treated less than their straight counterparts. Like, they're killed off, they don't get their own development, they really don't get to exist as a character outside of their own suffering. It's so damaging and problematic. I hate this trope, and you should too, so I'm putting it at the bottom. The next trope is the miscommunication trope, where characters have a misunderstanding between each other, and it usually takes a long time for them to resolve it, like, longer than it should. This trope is is just very annoying. Like, I always find myself thinking, oh my god, you could just solve this misunderstanding in one minute if you guys just actually said how you felt or let the other speak instead of dragging out this conflict for way too long. It's used as filler and lazy writing a lot of times, but I also don't really dislike it because I just don't have strong feelings towards the trope. I just think it's annoying and I don't like when it's the only conflict between the characters because that's not interesting, so I'm gonna put it in meh. This next trope is another one that I hadn't even really thought about until I saw people comment on it, the unexpected pregnancy trope. Honestly, once I read the comments, I was like, oh my god, this trope is in so many shows, and why? what for? As I reflected on shows like teen dramas and sitcoms, the shows that mostly use this trope, I realized that this trope is really used as a device to bring two people together romantically or to really up the pace on a romantic story, or it's written so that they can eventually write a miscarriage which is then used as a destructive device to break up a couple. And I really don't like that, I think it should stop. Also, shows and movies rarely let the characters explore their options. It's always that they have to have the baby and they have to raise the baby without like a question at all. So personally, I want to put this under, please, I beg you to let this go. So I kind of made up this next trope. It's not a real trope, but who cares? I call it two pretty best friends. Shout out to the person who also commented about best friends, by the way. Essentially, this is when the story centers two best friends, or there's just like an iconic best friend duo in the story. I love it. I enjoy it every time. I love stories about friendship. I enjoy best friend duos. I've never seen it and thought enough, so I'm gonna put it at the top. Next is a good old-fashioned redemption arc, and I... Have thoughts. I appreciate redemption arcs because it allows the opportunity for a character to be dynamic, which is more reflective of how human beings are. It allows for character development and for a character to actually become better. However, I've seen a handful of redemption arcs that are just poorly done, either because they're written in a way where the things that they did are just unforgivable, or they don't actually show enough character development to have me believe that the people around them have forgiven them. That being said, there are definitely examples of it that I do really like. So I don't love this trope because I need better examples of it, but I like this trope. So it's going under I like this, but it's complicated. So next is a very obvious bottom tier trope. There's just a trend in bottom tier tropes being literal crimes to humanity here. The next trope is the white savior trope. If you're not familiar with what this trope is, it's when a white character saves the people of color from their plight, usually gaining perspective or character development from it. Jail. Jail for obvious reasons. It positions white people in a place of superiority, and I would fight this trope influencer boxing style if I could, so it's going at the bottom. Now now we have the love at first sight trope. Honestly, this trope doesn't make me mad, which is I guess where the bar is now. I don't hate this trope with the same fury that I hate some other tropes, but I also don't like this trope. It's usually in fairy tales and it's also usually used to portray someone just like being physically attracted to someone else. I just don't believe in love at first sight. Like I don't think it's realistic. It's not my preferred way of portraying love and attraction between two characters. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this trope is not as popular as it used to be, but 
it's going under meh. This next one is not really a trope either or like not officially, it's just something that a lot of people on social media have started saying, but it's called the black cat slash golden retriever trope. This is where there's a duo where one person has the personality of a black cat, moody, quiet, introverted, and the other character has a personality of a golden retriever, very cheery, very friendly, extroverted. It's pretty much a more fun way of saying that it's an opposites attract pair, but it's also not necessarily romantic, like it's for friendships too. I enjoy this trope. I love seeing two characters who are like not anything like each other, handling conflict, building a relationship with each other, just interacting. It's just really fun and cute, so I'm putting this at the top and I'm sorry, but I actually really like this. Next is the femme fatale. The femme fatale is French for the fatal woman. It's a character trope of a woman who is mysterious, dangerous, seductive, and usually brings about the destruction of men in her story. Interestingly enough, this trope became a thing post-World War II where men were using it to portray their anxieties and fears over women gaining more power and also also gaining more experience in jobs outside of the house while they're at war. And it's pretty iconic that it's evolved into a trope that women mainly love. I would say that my feelings about this trope is a little bit complicated for multiple reasons. If done well, I love this trope. You know I love Gaslight Gatekeep girl boss energy. However, sometimes the femme fatale character is written in a way where they do something really bad and that's excused, or they're two-dimensional and sexualized by men rather than sexual. When it is done well though, it's empowering and iconic, so I'm gonna put it in I like it, but it's complicated. Complicated. This next trope is another that I kind of came up with, but I just had to throw in there because it really makes my brain cells disintegrate. This next one is when there's a group of friends and then they all just end up dating each other. So like everyone has either dated their friend's ex or their ex's friend. The way that this is way too normalized in media. This overlaps with the love triangle for sure, but this is specifically with a friend group. But yeah, sometimes it seems like it's written because it's the only way to make a dynamic interesting. But I am begging this trope to stop being so common. So the next trope not only makes my brain cells disintegrate, but it makes me want to throttle any writer that thinks this is a good idea. The teacher dating the student trope. Like, I just... I can't with this one. It's grooming and abusive power, uncomfortable, usually handled very poorly, sometimes endgame. I'm genuinely grateful that more people now are like, this is up because prior to 2016, this was just a very common thing that not a lot of people were calling out. You know that TikTok sound that's like, wait, that sounds like better, 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 better Stop! Yeah, I don't even consider this trope a forbidden romance because it's just wrong and it's better, 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 So that's going at the bottom. Now we have the amnesia trope, another insert from one of you. Here's the thing, in soaps and older dramas, like either in the States or internationally, it checks out. It's very on brand. With other stuff, I'm like meh. I don't like it, but I also don't consume media that has so much of it to the point where I'm like, this is too much, so I'm gonna put it under meh. Next, we have the slow burn trope. I love a good slow burn. I just don't like it when it's dragged on too long or where I'm at a point where I'm like, literally, what is stopping these two characters from getting together? I also don't love on and off relationships to drag on the will they or won't they thing, but I do love a slow burn, and it's usually paired with friends to lovers, which I think is why I like it, but here's the thing. I don't think I like it enough to say that it goes at the top. Like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm also impatient. I think I'll put it in I like it, but it's complicated. So the next trope is the fake dating trope. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I feel so neutral about this trope. There are movies with this trope that I think are good and movies with this trope that I would set on fire. It's a mixed bag. Don't particularly like it. Don't particularly dislike it. It's pretty common. Like we've been seeing it since the early aughts. I just haven't gotten to the point where I'm annoyed by how much I'm seeing it. So I'm gonna put it in the middle. Next on the list, I've added the sapphic himbo duo. This is a lesbian and himbo, usually a straight man best friend pairing and I absolutely love this one. Personally, I don't think we get enough of it. In fact, there are many missed opportunities for it, but anytime I see it, I love it. They're charming, they're funny, they're sweet. It's a great opportunity to subvert stereotypes and make commentary that we usually don't see through this lens, so there really is no place for it but the top. Second to last is the I can fix him trope. It's when a woman comes across a man who's a bad person, but then being with him makes him a better person. The backbone of this trope really is gender stereotyping where the woman is nurturing and takes care of the guy and the guy just expects her to do that even though he has his own issues that he needs to work through himself. It's for the most part portrayed in straight couples. Oftentimes it's like a nice girl gets with an awful guy and then everyone around her is like, oh my god, you changed him. He's a completely different person with you. And it's outdated and harmful and not realistic. You cannot force a person to change. Your partner is not your project. So it's gotta go and please I beg you to let this go because we're done. No one likes this trope anymore. And sorry to end this way, I did not intend for a bottom tier trope to be the 
ending of this ranking video, but we have the bully who's secretly gay trope. This is a trope where there's a bully, a homophobic bully, who ends up actually being gay and having a crush on the person that they're harming, sometimes even ending up with that person. You know how girls get told when they're little that if a boy picks on them, then he probably has a crush on them? This feels like it has the same backbone or roots, which is just so harmful. It's harmful messaging to young, impressionable people. Closeted homophobic people exist, obviously, and it's a very real thing, but it needs to be handled more carefully when being written into media. Like, it's definitely important to explore toxic masculinity and internalized homophobia in writing, but writing a bully who's closeted while also harming the person they like and then having no real consequences for it is perhaps not the way to go. It's something that needs to be handled with more care, and based on the portrayals I've seen of it, I want to put it at the bottom. And that's my ranking of popular TV slash film tropes. There are so many I didn't get to rank, but I hope you like this video. Please like it if you did, let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. I'd love to hear a different perspective that I haven't thought about on a trope. Also, let me know if you want a part two and subscribe to this channel for more videos.